It is a great day for baseball in downtown Detroit. Another kids day at Comerica Park this Sunday as it is every Sunday. Plenty for the family and kids to do at the ballpark again today. It is an absolutely perfect day for baseball here in Detroit as we welcome you to Comerica Park. The third and final game in this series featuring the Angels and the Detroit Tigers. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba, Ron Allen, glad to have you with us as we wrap up this three-game set here against the Halos, and it has not been a good series for the Tigers. Obviously trying to find a way to get this thing jump-started. I guess they could start by getting a couple hits offensively. They just have not been able to get it done in this series. Well, they need a laugher. That much is for certain. They need to go out there, and they need to score 10 runs like the Angels did yesterday. Take all the guesswork out of it for Jim Leland. Allow Porcello to go out there and relax a little bit because a lot of times lately the Tigers starters, they've had very little margin for air. A laugher is just what the doctor ordered here today for the Tigers team. Yeah, I love to laugh, so uh, we'll see if we can get one of those today. But Brennan Bosch is batting in the number three spot in the lineup today. Jim Leland's shaking it up a bit. Maybe that will get Bosch going or continue to get him going. He has shown some signs recently, but with Cabrera behind him, maybe that's a good thing today. Well, it can't hurt. That much is for certain. Now, Bosch was really struggling batting behind Cabrera. Uh, this much we do know. He'll get some good pitches to hit in front of Cabrera. The key now for Brennan is to make sure you get those good pitches and you don't swing at pitches that are out of the strike zone. But clearly him batting in front of Cabrera here today might create uh, more advantages for this ball club as Jim continues to search for answers as far as his offense is concerned. All right, it's the Tigers and the Angels just moments away. In the meantime, we go back to the Call Sam Studios now and with more on our coverage, here's Ryan Field. Downtown Detroit today. Beautiful day for baseball here as we get you ready for the Tigers and the Angels. If Detroit combines for three or more home runs in this game, bring a copy of the box score to a participating Arby's location tomorrow and get yourself a free small order of curly fries. Mike Sosha has his team primed to try and get a sweep of this series here against the Tigers. Sosha's team not nearly as good on the road this year as they were last year. We'll check out his starting lineup. Here today presented by Honda Bloomfield and it features Bobby Abreu once again leading off. He's the DH today though. Eric Ibar is at shortstop. Alberto Cayaspo at third base. Meiser is tourist at second base. 
Juan Rivera back in right field. Howie Kendrick will open up at first base. And their bottom three is Willits, Mathis, and Borges. Here's the scouting report on Rick Porcello. It is presented by Scott's Lawn Pro. Well, he just simply needs to figure it out here today. He's been in too many fastball-friendly counts his last few starts in the big leagues, and you just can't live that way when your fastball tops out at 94 miles an hour. He needs to keep the ball in the ballpark. He's given up five home runs in his last six starts, and, of course, confidence is a big, big part of it as far as Porcello is concerned. And pretty much with anybody at this level without it, you're not going to have a lot of success. So Rick is all ready to go, and so are we as Bobby Abreu settles into the batter's box. And it is the final game in this three-game set. Tigers trying to get a win here. They come in at 53 and 57. Porcello's first pitch of the ball game. He shows Bunt takes a strike. One, one on Bobby Abreu, who's been hitting leadoff all three games in this series. Abreu is one for seven. He has a couple of walks and batting 254. And Porcello missed that one outside. One ball and one strike. Rick trying to shake off the effects of giving up seven runs in four and a third in a loss to Chicago in his last outing. Here's the 1-1. One -one. That rides inside. Two balls and one strike. He might need to mix in a breaking ball or a change up very early in this game just to kind of set the tone. Uh, we talked about the fact that he needs to stay out of fastball friendly counts. This is one of those counts. Missed again. Three balls, one strike. Abreu, with two walks in the series, will take his base on balls. That has been part of his game. In fact, he leads the club this year with 60 walks. And the 3 1. That'll go foul down the left field line. 3 2 on Abreu. A little bit of a breeze blowing out toward left or toward the corner in left this afternoon. Eric Ibar waiting on deck. We had some wind blowing last night as well. 3 2 pitch. On the ground to third, right at Inge who knocks it down. And Abreu is out. Let's take a look at the rest of the Tigers defensively. It's always presented by Beaumont Hospitals. You got Rayburn in left. Kelly is in center. Jackson and the speeds are in center field with the afternoon off. Brennan Bosch is back out in right today. The infield third to first reads Inge, Peralta, Rhymes, Cabrera. And it's Avila uh, with the assignment handling Porcello this afternoon. Here's Eric Ivar with one out. Had a big series, including homering in the ball game last night, his fifth of the season. That is not a big part of his game. In fact, the five home runs ties a career high for Ibar. Ibar with lots of infield singles. Therefore, you get your infielders across the board playing in a little closer than they normally would play in. He also likes to bunt for lots of hits. And quickly behind in the count here, 0 2. Ibar in the series, four hits and nine at bats. That's lifted in the air to shallow center field. Late jump, but making up for it is Don Kelly for the out. And last season, Porcello finished third as far as the rookie of the year voting, but this year uh, he has not fared all that well. He comes in four and ten with an earned run average that's approaching six. He also had quite a few starts down in the minor leagues, so. Now at this point in time, if you're Porcello and if you're the Tigers, you'd love to see Porcello just kind of end this season on a really positive note. Here's Alberto Callaspo speaking of positive notes. He's been one for the Angels in this series, four for eight. Sometimes it's not how you start, but it's really how you finish. One ball and one strike on Callaspo. Rick has had his stretches this year in which he has looked like the kid we saw last year in his rookie campaign. His last victory was on May the 23rd. Looks like a 1-2-3 inning as Will Rhymes gobbles this one up and it is indeed. They go 1-2-3 and we go to the bottom of the first.
Starting lineup is presented by Big Boy this afternoon, and there are some changes. Will Ryan leads off. He'll play second base. Johnny Damon back in the lineup is the DH today. Then Brian Bosch and then Miguel Cabrera. Johnny Peralta batting in the five hole, followed by Rayburn, Inge, Avila, and Kelly are your bottom three. That's how the Tigers will start today against Trevor Bell. And Rhymes in the leadoff slot, batting 220 this year, hitless in this series. One thing Rhymes has not done a lot of since coming up from the minor leagues is that's attempt to bunt for base hits. It's a part of his game. I know Jim Leland and Gene Lamont have had him out bunny early before batting practice, but with the infielders playing him on the corners as they do, sometimes it discourages base stealers and base runners from bunting for base hits. And, but really, you can't allow the defenders to discourage you. If that's part of your game, you have to continue to play your game. Will had a terrific year at Triple A Toledo this year prior to the call up. 27th round pick getting to the big leagues. A slap in the air toward left. Reggie Willits backing up, one gone. Well, the Bernstein advantage brings you the scouting report on Trevor Bell. Get the Bernstein advantage. We go to bat for you. And only the third start this year for Bell. He is getting a spot start. They've had to use their disabled list quite often this year. Joel Pinheiro, uh, the latest addition to Mike Sosha's DL. But one thing Bell does do, he does keep the ball down. He's only given up one home run in 29 innings. But he could be the slump buster here today. Uh, not overpowering stuff. Not a signature pitch, so to speak, a strikeout pitch. So the Tigers need to get that offense going here today against Bell. Johnny Damon batting in the two slot is 0 for 4 in the series. And he takes a strike on the outer edge, 1 1 on Johnny. Damon, in fact, trying to bust an 0 for 12 slump. Tigers trying to get the offense going. They have not had much of it the first two games in this series. And there's a base hit to left. So the 0 for 12 goes bye bye, and there's a single for Damon. Take a look at the Angels defensively. The outfield reads Willits, Borges, the youngster. Rivera had a big game last night. He's in right. It's Kayaspo, Ibar, is Torres Kendrick in the infield, and Jeff Mathis getting his first start of this series behind the plate. Three different starting catchers in this series. Well, two, I should say. Napoli played first base last night. Here's Bosch batting in the three slot. Bosch at 284. It doesn't really matter where Brennan bat Bosch is batting third, fifth, sixth. You get strikes and you put them in play. That's the remedy. The 0 1 pitch. Fouled off the mask of the catcher, 0-2 on Bosch. And Bosch had a positive game a couple of days ago against Weaver, the ace of the Angels staff. He struck out his first time up, and then he homered and then singled sharply into the outfield. He put a couple of real good swings on the baseball against a really good pitcher. Home run that Bosch hit on Friday was his first at June 27th in the interleague play against the Atlanta Braves at Turner Field on the road. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. A pitch up at the letters and the first strikeout for Bell. He cannot catch up to a fastball in the low 90s in that area. He's going to bring up Cabrera now with two outs. Miguel at 345 has knocked in 93 this year. He's walked three times in the series, and his walk total continues to balloon. Foul back out of play. It's tragic that the Tigers' season has taken a turn for the worse, and Miguel Cabrera not nearly getting the credit that he deserves now for the MVP monster season that he's put up. Well, he's three for 15 on this homestand. He. Uh, was pitched around quite a bit by Chicago in that four game series. That is hitting the air a mile high to shallow right field. Juan Rivera still coming. The wind playing with it a bit. And the Tigers are done. No runs and a hit. One left to the second we go.
Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Strength and stability since 1849. And by Comcast, call 1-800-COMCAST for TV, phone, and Internet. Rally cap day here at the ballpark. That was the giveaway here this afternoon. Those are actual authentic rally caps. The Tigers fans are sporting today. We are scoreless as we go to the second. And some of them are even autographed. Porcello back to work. Meiser is tourist. Leading it off for the Angels. It'll be his tourist Rivera and Howie Kendrick. It's been a long time since I've seen a guy hitting 241 with three home runs and 25 driven in, batting in the number four spot for their respective clubs. But that's exactly where his tour is, is batting here for Mike Socia. And now he is hitting every single spot in Socia's batting order this year. Here's the 1 1. His tourist is having a giant series five for seven. He has scored three times. Certainly not your prototypical cleanup man, but Tory Hunter is serving game two of his suspension. The one two is outside. Two two on Meiser. Imperative for Porcello to work south of the knees. He needs to get back to having that real good sinker ball that he had a season ago. He's been working up in the strike zone. Therefore, he's been giving up lots of hits, lots of fly balls. And with that comes some home runs. Counts to Will Rhymes and his tourist is out. That's three ground ball outs of the first four batters in this game. One away, and that'll bring up Juan Rivera. He had a monster night uh, last night. That much is for sure. And you see that from time to time when you're a late addition to the starting lineup. Not a whole lot to prepare, not a whole lot to think about. And Rivera played a very good game last night. Got his eighth outfield assist as well in that game. Porcello missing inside, 1 0 on Rivera. 42 RBIs this year. Mike Sosha commenting before the series even started about some of his veterans and how they are not quite where they had been in past seasons. Rivera, one of them, although he strokes another hit in this series, a solid single to center. He'll put one on with one out, and that'll bring up Howie Kendrick. Kendrick at 271, nine game hitting streak. One for four in the series has a double. He is playing first base today with the injury to Kendry Morales. They've used Napoli. They've used Kendrick. Ball one. Kind of makes you wonder if a corner infield spot is in the future for a guy like Kendrick when you've got guys that can really catch the baseball so well up the middle like is Torres and Ibar. Kendrick has decent numbers, decent power numbers. He's hit nine homers this year. Certainly not uh, comparable to a lot of first or third basemen around the league, but he can drive in some runs. In fact, he's just off his pace from last year. Would it be safe to say that he's been known for his bat and not his glove since coming to the big league? Oh, that's, yeah, that's no question. Yeah, Howie, every step of the way, has been a terrific hitter. The 1 1. 1 and 2 on Kendrick. Good slider there you know, by Porcello, which is very important for him to use all of his pitches in this game. Has not had this consistency with this pitch all year long, but that's a good one. Rick retired for a straight prior to the Rivera single. And looking for a double play ball here. The 1 2. Swing and a miss. Got a strikeout instead. And that's his first of the game. Back to back. Real good slide pieces from Porcello. Here is Reggie Willits. Willits a start in left today. Strike one on Willis, who hails from Chickasha, Oklahoma. He lives in Fort Cobb, Oklahoma. Speed is the name of his game. A couple of years ago, had a fine rookie season, hit 293. Spent much of last year at AAA. 
Rivera draws the throw. Angels crawling back up to 500 with their win yesterday, 56 and 56 record. The Tigers 53 and 57. Little pop up shallow left. It's going to drop base hit. Willits goes the other way. Rivera trying to take the extra base and he does. He'll get to third. First and third now for the Angels with two outs. It's going to bring up Jeff Mathis. Last night the Angels five for 18 with men in scoring position. They rolled up some big numbers. Of course the big five run fifth inning was their biggest frame. They ended up with 13 hits. Mathis has always been known as the defensive catcher uh, when the combination of he and Napoli present the two catchers on their big league roster. but. Uh, he did an outstanding job last year in the postseason and got off to a really good start this year offensively before uh, breaking a hand and landing on the disabled list and he hasn't recovered from that very hot start he got off to. He broke his wrist earlier this year which made him miss 55 games which is a pretty good chunk of the season. He was swinging the bat very very well. Got off to a, uh, a really good start in April was well above. 300, but since April is batting 186 for the balance of the year. That's into center field. Don Kelly is on the run, still going back, and he makes the running catch. Man, oh man, Don Kelly has put on a show on this homestand defensively. A long running play to center field. Looked like Austin Jackson. To bring his glove with him everywhere he plays for Jim Lee, then he takes one step in because Mathis does not have a whole lot of power. And by him getting back and making this play, it saves the Tigers a couple of runs because they would have scored a couple of runs on that double. Johnny Peralta on the first pitch flies one to right field and quickly one gone here in the second. Well, a lot of real estate here at Comerica Park, and he covers quite a bit of it. It's a nice, nice running catch by Don Kelly. Real good concentration as well. And greeted by his teammates. Good job well done. So that kept the game scoreless. 
Here's Ryan Rayburn. He is batting in the sixth slot in this one here today. Rayburn has kind of been all over the place in terms of the lineup. He was batting third last night and picked up the Tigers only RBI last evening. One ball and one strike. Trevor Bell is 23 years old, born in North Hollywood, California. 6'2, 185. Made his big league debut last year. Cut and a miss. One and two. He's got a fastball, got a slider, got a change up. Gives up some hits. Keeps the ball in the ballpark. We told you he's only given up one home run in 29 innings pitched so far in the big leagues, but uh, he's the kind of guy that the Tigers need to have success against today. Put together some good at bats. Uh, Aspo off to his left, handles the hard ground ball, two gone. We'll bring up Brandon Inge. Inge in search of his first hit of the series, 0 for 6. Brandon got three hits, didn't he? First game back off the disabled list. Very first game back. Back with a bang, so to speak, and still looking for his first hit here against the Angels. Angels came into this series struggling, having been swept in Baltimore by the Orioles. But they've taken the first couple of games of this series. Good pitching, some timely hitting. They've played some pretty good baseball here the last couple of days. Started with Weaver. Casimir looked really good in his return last night. Weaver outdueled Justin Verlander in game one in the series. I was reading some comments uh, by Mike Sosha on Casimir's start last night, and boy, were they pleased with the reestablished fastball he was featuring last night. And pretty much 75, 80% of Casimir's pitches last night were the old number one, the fastball. Here's the 2 2. Brandon fouls it back out of play. Well, if the Angels are to get back into their division, and right now they trail by nine games in the West, they're really going to have to ride that pitching staff, which has some talent on it. Well, Texas is going to have to go stone cold, to be perfectly honest with you. They're going to really get back in it. And there is strike three on the outer edge. Inge just caught looking. The second strikeout of the game for Trevor Bell. Detroit is brought to you by the Romani Eye Institute, the most trusted name in eye care. And by AT&T, find out what's possible with the nation's fastest mobile broadband network, AT&T Rethink Possible. By the way, you can vote for your Tigers McDonald's player of the game today using your cell phone. Text Tigers followed by a space in the player's uniform number to 37338. That's FSDET. Vote for your favorite Tigers player of the game today, courtesy of McDonald's, and we'll see the final results. Post game on Tigers Live. A lot of kids at the ballpark today. Rally cap giveaway today. Porcello goes to work, and here's a punt right in front of the plate. It is ruled a foul ball. Or just laid it down, was starting out toward first base, and home plate umpire Ed Rapuano 
apparently the ball must have hit him while he was still in the batter's box or hit the bat while he was still in the batter's box. That's exactly what it does. It bounces down and then comes right back up and hits the bat. No harm, no foul as long as you're you're still in that batter's box. So if it hits you out of the batter's box, obviously, and they call you out. It's a good play by Ed, good call by Ed Rapuano. The 0 1. So now Board just down on the count 0 2. You can't blame Jim Leland for trying, though. Trying anything at this point in time. Borges hitless for the series 0 for 9. And in fact now 2 for 19 to start his big league career. He was rated as the number 2 prospect in the Angels system. By Baseball America coming into play this year. Chopped right back to the mound. He's going to be 0 for 10. One gone. Time for a game break now. We go back to the studio and here's Ryan Field. All right, thanks. Here we're still scoreless as we play in the third, and Porcello now facing the top of the lineup, Bobby Abreu. That Cleveland team has been playing some inspired baseball since the second half of the season began. It started with a four game sweep of the Tigers. Manny Acta has them playing really well. And they are knocking on fourth place's door. They are just a half game behind KC coming into action today. Minnesota. Yeah, they got to go to Chicago and start a big, big series next week against the White Sox, who are a very hot team. That's going to be interesting. Yep. Whistle back out of play. One and two on a brave. See, Carl Pavano's got 14 wins for them. He's won 14 games. I saw that, but I'm still wondering, as you have talked about in recent games, whether or not they have enough starting pitching. I just when you when you match them up with Chicago, it's going to be tough for them, I think. That's a good point. But boy, do they have a good lineup. The one, two. And go foul. Mauer's hot all of a sudden. He's hitting 500 in his last 14 games. Abreu is 0 for 1 with a ground out. Uncharted waters for these two managers, of course. Socia's team is always in first place this time of year. And the Tigers, uh, they spent. 124 days in first place last year. So, a couple teams that uh, aren't used to being where they're at. And the 2 2. Missed it. 3 and 2 on Abreu. This guy's got a good eye. I was just about to say the same thing. It's amazing. It's a good eye, man. Just don't not usually swing at bad pitches. And because you don't swing at bad pitches, even on borderline. Pitches where you could be called out, you still get the benefit of the doubt. Back up the middle. Nice spinning play by Peralta. Got him at first base. Johnny's showing a little bit of range there and a nice spin move. It's a nice job here by Peralta. He's able to cheat up the middle a little bit more than he normally would because of the athleticism of Brandon Inge at third. So he can overplay some guys. Therefore, he gets to the ball. He wheels, does a pirouette, and fires a strike to Cabrera. That's one of the things that Brandon Inge provides for the shortstop because he moves so well laterally. You can overplay hitters to a certain side if you're Peralta and therefore your range which is not great it becomes better because of your third baseman. Here's Eric Ibar with two outs waving a miss so and two. Talk about Johnny not playing a whole lot of shortstop in recent time with Cleveland but he had a ton of experience there obviously coming up as a shortstop playing over 700 games at that position with the Indians. And he has slid right back into that spot. The 0 2 is strike three. And out of there looking is Ibar. The second strike out of the game for Rick Porcello. He throws a 1 2 3 third.
bottom of the third here on a Sunday afternoon at the ballpark. No score. Tigers Angels wrap up a three game set. Avila, Kelly, Rhymes facing Bell. Alex so for three in the series, batting 211 this year. Tigers have one hit. That was a single by Damon back in the first. Angels have two hits. But so far, the uh, pace of this one has been dictated by Porcello and Bell. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Two and one on Avila. Bell got him one, two, three in the second. Now the two one. Three balls in one strike. And predictable fastball count here for Avila. And this is one where you look for that fastball. And it doesn't have to be a perfect pitch. And but you pretty much know you're going to get it. And if you do, and get out in front of it. Walked him. Leadoff man is on. That is the first base on balls for the right hander Bell. By the way, veteran NFL writer Mike O'Hara heads up our Lions training camp coverage at FoxSportsDetroit.com. Look for his Lions insider column as well as other reports and commentary from the activities at Allen Park. You can read Mike O'Hara's Lions training camp coverage now at FoxSportsDetroit.com. Here's Don Kelly with a terrific running catch already under his belt today. Batting with one on and nobody out. Kelly has had four hits on the homestand. Well, if you choose to do something here, it's not all bad. It's a 1 0 count, and uh, their offense has not been very good in this homestand. So every now and then, as a manager, you try to jumpstart that offense, and this is a good hit and run count. And should Jim want to put something on? There's a strike one and one. Only so much you can do as a manager. You can change the batting order, which he has done the last couple of days. Move some guys around. Damon batted six a couple of days ago today. Bosch is batting third. Rhymes batted ninth once. Now he's batting lead off. Jackson getting a day off. Kelly behind now one and two. But ultimately it comes down to your players. And them producing on the field. And that one just missed two balls two strikes. Leland before the game today saying that he felt it was a good day to get Jackson off. He's been grinding through his first major league season here at the big league level with Detroit and he also felt that coming out of the break Jackson was freshened up a little bit so he knows the importance of getting his guys some days off to get them through the months of October or I should say August and September and hopefully October. That's the goal. But Jackson's had a terrific rookie season. And so far has not wilted under the pressure, which is, I think, been pretty uh, immense for him. Leading off, replacing Granderson, playing center field. Well, he's probably rookie of the year uh, as we speak because he hasn't wilted under the pressure. He's been consistent all year long. Maybe had one week where he kind of slowed down a little bit, but he quickly recovered. Neptali Feliz of the Texas Rangers would probably also be at the top of that list as far as you know, rookie of the year candidates. Yeah, he's stellar. He's among uh, all of the offensive players, along with Bosch, been uh, right up there. That's low, three and two. You know, Andrew Bailey, the closer for the Oakland A's, got the Rookie of the Year voting last year, but there really wasn't an impact offensive rookie. And Brennan Bosch is still in that conversation. Rhymes waiting on deck. 3 2 runner going, and it's driven in the air to center field. Hit well. Borges on the run, and he'll get there and track it down. That's that speed that they've been talking about as far as Peter Borges is concerned in center field. He outran that baseball, and that's why they asked the nine time gold glover, Torrey Hunter, to move to right field. 
tremendous running catch by Borges. It saves the Angels a run. We've already seen two real good plays by both center fielders in this game. Same type of catches as well. Here's Will Rhymes. Avila was around second base, had to retouch the bag and hustle back on that long running play by Borges. Rhymes 0 for 1 with a fly ball. Well, getting back to that conversation about rookie of the year, Feliz right now has 29 saves for Texas. It's a lot. I would think, based on the team he plays in, they're in the pennant race, that there's a good chance he'll get to 40 and beyond. There's a good shot. A good shot at that. So the question becomes which is more important, which is a bigger season? There goes the runner. And it's looped in the left base hit. And the dealer will stop at second base. Well, apparently Jim wasn't thinking hit and run with Kelly, but he was thinking hit and run with Rhymes and Avila, and Rhymes did it to perfection. You've got to help your team out. You've got to move some guys around, and this is a nice piece of hitting. Takes a little slider off the plate and just kind of laces it the opposite way. I don't know, man. There's some people out there that believe that the closer is one of the most important people on the field when it comes down to the end of the game. The 25th, 26th, 27th outs are so tough to get. It's demoralizing for your team when you lose games in that fashion. I know Jim really, really appreciates the closer's position. He does. There's no doubt about that. And I agree with that. But I also feel that a guy that goes out there just about every day compared to a closer may have a little bit more value. A closer won it last year. But as you mentioned, there really wasn't that one guy that had that good offensive season. Nope, there was. There was not really an impact rookie. It was Andrews, I guess, was the... The best offensive player last year. He finished second. It'll be interesting. Of course, there's a long way to go. We'll see where Jackson ends up. We'll see where Bosch ends up. Well, it's just nice to be able to have a couple of guys that are in that conversation that uh, you root for. Damon, a chance to drive in a run or two here. He's got two men on. He's singled back in the first. The 1 1 pitch. Well, really, the Tigers just need to start winning a few more games so we can start to focus on some of those positive years that some of these guys are having. I made mention of the fact the last time Cabrera was up that his MVP season's kind of gotten lost with the losses that the team has racked up the second half of the year, which is unfortunate. Two and two on Damon. Yeah, I think uh, when people look at some of the best offensive years and grade guys and who has been the most valuable in the league, they will first look at teams that are in the playoff race or a chance to win. 2 2. And you just hope that Cabrera doesn't get lost in the shuffle. Meanwhile, Damon takes strike three. So Bell has his third strikeout. And now it's going to take a two out hit from Brennan Bosch. When Brennan struck out his first time up. He struck out on a fastball at 92 miles an hour up around the old English D. And that's the pitch that Brennan needs to lay off of. It's also a pitch that opposing teams have given him a lot of lately. Bosch 352. Swing and a miss. Uh oh, snap throw down to second, and they've got Avila caught in a rundown. Here's Kayaspo running him back, and now the tag will finally be made on Alex Avila. So the inning is over. Tigers get a couple of hits, but nothing showing for it.
spinning, and it looked like Ibar, the shortstop, and also Matt is the catcher. They kind of baited Avila here. You can see Ibar is directly behind it, but as soon as Brennan Bosch takes a swing, he slides right in behind Avila. Avila with one stutter step toward third. Mathis throws from his knees and throws a strike, and then uh, with the speed of Avila, there's no way that he's going to get out of that. But that's a planned play by the shortstop and the catcher. They noticed that Avila's secondary lead was too big while Damon was up there. So they put the play on, and the play worked. So it remains scoreless as we go to the fourth inning, and coming up for the Angels, it's Cayaspo, it's Torres, and Rivera facing Rick Porcello, who has given up only two hits. And has struck out two. He looks good. His balls are at the bottom of the strike zone, and for the most part, he has thrown first pitch strike uh, to a lot of these Angels hitters this afternoon. And when Porcello was able to do that, uh, he gets the ground balls that he needs. Good pitch. One and one on Kayaspo. Porcello had a one, two, three first, a one, two, three third. Sun is doing its best to peek through the clouds today. A little bit overcast at the start. The wind blowing out toward left and uh, pleasant temperatures, 83 degrees. Last three A's have been perfect uh, baseball weather. It's supposed to be getting hot though this week. Really? Yep. Upper 80s. 2 2 on Kayaspo. And yeah, this cat doesn't strike out all that much. And one of the toughest hitters in the American League to strike out. Not only this year, but last year as well. He and Polanco were right up there, one and two. Along with Dustin Pedroia, believe it or not. His biggest swing is Petey takes. He doesn't strike out that much. What's his deal? When's he coming back? I'm uh, not quite sure. It'll be a while, I think. He had a little bit of a setback. Pedroia, yeah. that is. They've lost Euclid for the year. It's a tough go there in Boston. Tough go for a lot of clubs, really. 3 2 pitches on the ground to the right side. Rhymes. Porcello covering, and he can't handle it. Leadoff man is on. That's a play that, for the most part, Cabrera usually goes after, but this time he wisely allows Rhymes to field the baseball. And while Porcello is running toward the bag, it looks like the throw might have been a tail behind Porcello, but it's still a ball that should have been caught. An out should be recorded, I guess I should say, but they didn't get the out. Ball behind Porcello, he reaches back for it, and they don't get the out. So they open the door a bit here as Kayaspo leads off by reaching. That'll bring up his tourists. My sir is tourists where they bounce out back in a second. They're charging Porcello with an error on that play. Rhymes gets an assist. That was one of those in between calls. I mean, you could see the error going to the second baseman, Rhymes, because the throw was tailing, yet it probably was a ball that should have been caught. It's an error either way. The runner goes and it's drilled down the right field line. Fair ball. Bosch over there to cut it off. Meanwhile, Kayaspo will get to third base, and just like that, the Angels trying to take advantage of the air. Well, Mike Sosha, he put the hit and run on himself with his number four hitter today is Torres, and a ball at the top of the strike zone presents first and third for the Angels, but they go first to third as well as any team in baseball. So both managers trying to jumpstart their offenses here today. Rick Knapp's going to make a visit as Juan Rivera gets set to check in. Well, if you're Porcello in this situation, runners on first and third and nobody out, what you really have to do is concentrate on the base, on the hitter here. You make a good pitch, you get a double play, but that run's going to score. You kind of have to forget about Kai Osbo on third base. By the way, this game today is available in crystal clear high definition on Fox Sports Detroit HD. It is sponsored by Comcast. Another nice gathering here this afternoon for the series finale. The Tampa Bay Rays are coming to town beginning tomorrow. You may remember Porcello's last start. He got off to a pretty good start first time through the batting order, but then he ran into some issues after uh, that first time through. And I'm sure that 
you know, they probably need to make some adjustments against the Angels because the Angels may have made an adjustment against Porcello. So here is Rivera who had the big hit early on last night a two run bases loaded single in the first. Three hits in the game now for the Angels they have runners at the corners. Rapuano giving uh, Alex Avila a chance to catch his breath. In case you're wondering, Juan Rivera has grounded into eight double plays this year. Number nine would be lovely. Avila able to block that one and save a run. Looks like Rivera doesn't even stride with that front foot. Looks like he just kind of picks the heel up and then puts the foot right back down in the same spot. Take a look at the last spot. Look at the front foot. All he does is kind of cock the knee and the foot never comes up. Which a lot of times helps guys just put the ball in play. That one's going to get away and score the run. Scoring standing up is Kayaspo. So Avila was able to block one of them, but the second one gets away. That's an unblockable pitch at 95 miles an hour. You're not used to fastballs bouncing in front of you. Therefore almost impossible for you to block that ball. If it's a breaking ball. It's a different story. But a fastball at 95 you've got no shot at getting in front of it. So both runners move up. Angels have a one nothing lead. Two and one on Juan Rivera. Swing and a miss. 2 2. Rivera, a one time Yankees prospect. He's been with the Angels a few years now. In fact, Rivera is the only remaining Angel that was in the starting lineup in 2006. There's been some turnover since then with the Angels. That's surprising. They still win a lot of games with all the turnover. I didn't believe that the first time I read it, but then I started going position by position. I guess it's true. Wow. That's not necessarily guys on the team, but in the starting lineup they have. Well, he's the one constant. Mike Sosa. He got a real nice contract, too. Real friendly contract. Next 10 years. <laughs> Unheard of. That's pretty friendly. <laughs> but it's nice. Two two pitch. Well, if there's one guy that deserves a contract like that, it's a guy that has gotten your team to the playoffs in six of his first ten years. Well, not only that, but he's pretty much built the entire organization. Yeah, there's some help along the way, and but make no mistake about it, his stamp is on the entire organization. Entire organization. Ground ball to third. Tough hop for Brandon. Rivera is out. Holding at second base is Turris. Now Howie Kendrick. Kendrick 0 for 1. And don't forget about uh, his tour is at second base. The Angels love to steal third base. As a team, they like to steal third base. The 1 0 is on the ground with a shortstop. Peralta with an easy hop. He'll check the run. So a couple of ground balls, and Porcello now has a chance to limit the damage here. Well, you pretty much knew Kai Oswald was going to score from third base. You just didn't like the way that he scored on the wild pitch. But and Porcello won out away from and keeping this game real manageable. Here's Willits who singled back in the second. Coming off a pretty good month of July in which he hit 294. Mm -hmm. 
Willett's one of those guys with very little movement while standing in the batter's box. Very little hand movement. Not trying to do a whole lot of damage, just trying to hit the ball on the ground and run. That's what he does best. The inning started with the error charge to Porcello. That opened the door for the Angels. They knocked it open a bit with a wild pitch after a single by his tourist to take a one nothing lead and a nice stop by Avila. He's been all over the place in this inning on his shin guards. We showed you a 95 mile per hour fastball earlier in this inning where he couldn't block it but uh, when you get the circle change up and you can see it actually a breaking ball there off the top of the fingertips as a catcher you know you have time to get over and block that one because you're anticipating the ball being in the dirt. Swing and a miss. One and two. Porcello career here at Comerica Park, 11 and 8, but an ERA of over four. And he almost hit him as Willits spins out of the way. I kind of like uh, the aggressiveness of some of the fastballs today by Porcello at 94, 95 miles an hour. Kind of knocked the hitters off the plate. But the key is the next pitch after you. Purposely throw a ball inside. Will it spoil that one? Two and two, the count stays. Drive to second, caught by Will Rhymes, inning over. So Porcello does a nice job in limiting the damage. They'll strand a man. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Trivia question today who joined the 3000 hit 500 stolen base club on this day back in 1998. 3000 hit 500 stolen base club. That's a big number boy. That's Jeez. a big number. That fraternity can't be too big. I would imagine it wouldn't be. Bosch leads it off as we go to the bottom of the fourth Bosch Cabrera Peralta. Facing the right handed offerings of Trevor Bell. Who so far has kept the. Tigers off the board, although they threatened in the third. The 1 0. 1 1 on Bosch. 
Brennan, a strikeout victim back in the first, was at the plate in the third when Avila was picked off. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Popped up. Looks like it'll stay in play. Let's see Kendrick in foul ground. One away. Hey fans, enjoy 15 days of summer at Comerica Park with a new ticket package that lets you pick the games that you want to attend, buy a package, and receive great season ticket holder benefits, including, including postseason priority. Call 313 471 Ball or visit Tigers.com. Here is Cabrera. He swings on the first pitch and pops it up. Kendrick again in foul ground. And two very quick outs. And Tigers have got to display some patience here today against Bell. They're making it way too easy for him. Here comes Peralta. Trevor Bell was a first round pick of the Angels in 2005. I mentioned he was born in North Hollywood. He grew up an Angels fan. And here he is wearing Angels colors. A strike call. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Bouncing ball to third base. Going to be an easy inning for Bell. Deaspo throws him out. And 1 2 3 they go. Four in the books here at Comerica. 1 0 Halo. Franks taste the pure goodness. Great day here in the Motor City this afternoon. Beautiful day for a baseball game. And 1 0 is our score. The Angels on top as we travel to the top of the fifth in this one. Jeff Mathis, Peter Borges, Bobby Abreu in the fifth inning. Tiger fans just hoping for something to cheer about. They didn't have much to yell about last night. And the kids are still having fun. Marcelo goes to work against Mathis. Sundays are great days for the kids at Comerica Park. Mathis hit that one to center field his uh, first time up back in the second that Kelly ran down. And it came with two men out. He's buckling out of the way there. A lot of wind here today at Comerica Park blowing in from right field at a pretty crisp pace. Swing and a miss. One and two. He has had some really good off speed pitches today. Whether it be the changeup or whether it be the slider, and he has kept that ball down with real good movement. Down he goes. Third strikeout for Mr. Porcello. As a matter of fact, overall, Porcello looks very good here today. It's a nice bounce back game for him. 
last pitch a little two seam fastball. Borges showing bunt breaking ball low one and oh it's a good idea and for Borges he has struggled in his first uh, 20 at bats in the big leagues uh, so there therefore you might as well use the, the one weapon that you know that you have and that's your legs your speed I'm mentioning that Borges the number two overall prospect according to Baseball America and the Angel system their number one prospect according to Baseball America is a catcher by the name of Hank Conger who was a power hitting catcher in the minor leagues. And then Borges. And then Mike Trout. And they have uh, some pretty good position players that are considered keepers for the future. And there is a strike call. Well, Borges didn't disappoint. You know, he went out and lived up to the billing of the number two prospect in the organization with a sound, with a fine year in Triple A. Talking to Mike Sosha about the Dan Heron trade they made. He said we gave up a couple of really good minor league pitchers in that trade. So they thinned out a little bit pitching wise. As a chap to the third baseman, Inge rushing his throw in time for the out two gone. Well, with Artie Moreno being their owner, and the one thing that you can afford to do is give up some young pitching on occasion because you, know, you can go out and sign a free agent if you need to do so. Whereas some teams' pockets aren't that deep. They can't give up premium prospects. Karen's going to be in their uniform for the next two or three years. And sometimes as well in the draft guys will drop because some teams can't afford to pay them the money that they want. I mean the Tigers have been able to do that in recent years. Getting guys that fall a bit in the draft because of. Monetary requirements. And Arnie Marino has spent. A break with the batter. For two with a couple of ground balls. Porcello in search of another one two three inning. He's done it twice already today. The one one. Driven toward left center field, down a base hit. Rayburn cuts it off. Abreu takes a big turn, but decides to hold up. Two out single for Bobby Abreu. And the Angels have their fourth hit. He's going to keep it going now for Eric Ibar. And Bobby Abreu standing on first base has 16 stolen bases this year. If he gets four more, uh, that will get him to 20, and that will be at least the last 12 years in a row he's been able to get there. There really aren't too many statistical categories that Abreu has not put up big numbers in. His percentage, however, is not good like the rest of their club this year. Been caught nine times. Social continues to let him run now. The 0 1. Seventy five percent success rate overall in his career for a break. You. That gets away from Avila. That'll advance the runner. It's like I was saying it hit me, but I don't think that's the case. Yes, it is. It did hit Ibar. Ibar was lobbying for it, and home plate umpire Ed Rapuano said, "Take your base." Really tail from this angle.
Back foot and Ibar is aboard. That's going to put two on now with two outs. And here comes their number three hitter, Kiaspo. So it was looking like it might be an easy inning for Porcello, but the Angels are threatening. Kiaspo that reached on the air by Porcello to start the fourth, and he has scored the game's only run. Abreu and Ibar are aboard right now. 2 0. Round ball to third on the backhand. Brandon Inge will hit the bag for the out. Force out ends the inning. They threaten, do not score. Tigers baseball today brought to you by Bell Tire. Fifth inning here at Comerica Park. Tigers have only two hits today as Ryan Rayburn leads it off against the right hander Trevor Bell. Rayburn, then Inge, and then Avila. Bell has given up just a single to Damon and a base hit to Ryan. One ball, one strike on Ryan Rayburn. Driven well to right field. That ball's hit a ton, and that ball is up against the wall. Rayburn has extra bases. He'll go to second, and he's in with the leadoff double. Third hit of the day for the Tigers, and that thing was stroked out there to right center. Tonight's approach by Rayburn. He recognized that Bell was not going to come inside with any of his fastballs. He hasn't thrown a fastball inside to any of the Tigers hitters, so he looked away from him. He got a real good pitch to hit, kept his head down with great concentration. And he whistled that ball off of the gate in right center field. Ryan Rayburn safe at second base, safe and secure in New York life. We haven't did many of those lately. Well, this one came in handy. Now can the Tigers take advantage? Yeah, we haven't had many doubles. Lead off double. Inge had a strikeout back in the second, 0 for 1. Dying run in scoring position with nobody out. Inge trying to bunt. Tipped it into the glove. Strike two. Not a bad idea. Inge trying to get the job done. Not necessarily bunting for a base hit. If he gets a base hit, it's a bonus. Uh, but he's simply trying to get Rayburn over to third base. That's the way you play the game when your team's scuffling. It's a team player.
One and two. And Brandon, one of the few Tigers that uh, visually uh, does something in his batting stance with two strikes. He chokes up on the bat. About three, four inches. Rolls that one to third base. This will not advance the runner. In just safe. The ball is dropped by Kendrick. We were wondering if the absence of Slickfield and Henry Morales would uh, have an effect in this series, and we finally saw a ball drop. Actually, we saw one last night as well with Napoli. Looked like a routine play. So the Tigers have runners at first and third, and Alex Avila stepping up. Avila walked back in the third. They're playing for the bunt in the infield. Kayaspo about five steps in front of that third base bag, and Kendrick was about five steps in front of the first base bag, but now they are relaxed. After Avila showed no signs of bunting on that first pitch from Bell. The year, by the way, was given to Kayaspo on that play. The third baseman. Here's a bunt fielded on a bare hand by the catcher, Mathis. His throw is in time. He had thoughts of going to third base. Not only had thoughts of going to third base, but he also had thoughts of going to second base. It's a nice job by Avila getting the job done. Take a look at Mathis. He bounces on this ball. He catches it off one bounce. He looks to third. Now he looks to second. And he still knows he has time to get Avila running down the line. Not a picture perfect bunt, but he got the job done. That's all that matters. And now if Kelly can put together a base hit here, the Tigers have a chance to take their first lead. And keep the ball away from Kendrick, the, the first baseman. And you get yourself an RBI here if you're Kelly. Sacrifice fly, ground ball up the middle. You'll take them either way. Tigers have not led in this entire series. They fell behind in game one, 4 0. They fell behind last night, 2 0. The 1 0. 2 0, the count on Don Kelly. Kelly had a real good at bat his first time up. He flew out to deep right center field. The youngster, the speedster in center field, made a real nice running catch to take an extra base hit in an RBI away from Kelly. Driven to center field, drops in, base hit. One run scores. Inns will be held at third base. Throw coming down to second, and he is out. Ah. Don Kelly will get a single and an RBI. Inns stayed at third. And it's a 1 1 game. It's a nice base hit here by Kelly. He gets to first base, and he kind of stops momentarily, and then he sees the ball. Uh, over the cutoff man's head and tries to restart again. And that may have been the difference in him being safe and out. Math is a real good defensive catcher out in front of the plate, uh, able to throw him out. Once he stops, it's hard to start it up again. Single RBI. Put out goes 8 2 6. RBI 10 for Don Kelly. 1 1 game with the go ahead run at third and two outs. Here's Will Ryan. Rhymes a single for two in this game. Tigers now have four hits. In fact, both sides are run on four hits with one error. On oh two. I guess Carlos Guillen is due to be activated tomorrow, I believe, is the first day that he can play. Saw Carlos in the Tigers clubhouse before the game today. That would be a welcome sight. Back in the Tigers lineup. 
It's going to be a little bit longer for Ordonez. He'll get his foot checked on the 16th. And there's a face hit. Fair ball inside the bag at third base. A clutch. Two out knock for Will Rhymes, who goes to second with a double. Tigers have their first lead of the series. Anyway, like Rhymes got something at the top of the strike zone, maybe even out of the strike zone, but he gets on top of it and able to slice that ball right past Tyasco, their third baseman. And Rhymes gets his third RBI of the year. Tigers lead two to one. And a visit to the mound for Mike Butcher. Johnny Damon, the batter, one for two. Damon singled at his first hit bat, fanned back in the third. And he drives one to right field. That is a fair ball to the corner it goes. This will get another run in. Damon speeding towards second base in with a double. Three to one Detroit. Usually as a hitter, when the pitching coach makes a visit to see the pitcher, that next pitch is usually a fastball, but Damon gets a breaking ball and gets out in front of it and hits a seed down in that right field corner with one hand. Damon gets his 35th RBI. He's two for three today. And here comes number three hitter Brandon Bosch. Bosch in this game is 0 for 2. Tigers now have six hits. A three run fifth. Three consecutive hits for Detroit. Laid off that one. One ball, one strike. Bell gave up a leadoff double to Rayburn and then the air by Cayaspo. Opened the door for the Tigers. Rhymes a big RBI hit. Ooh, on the outside corner and Bosch thinking that was a tad outside. There's nothing really you can do with that pitch. It's the second time that Ed Rapuano has called this pitch a strike on Brennan. Nothing you can do with that pitch. Here to the outside. Hitter. One and two. Two two on Bosch. Damon has just doubled in a run. And the 2 2. Oh, he got him strike three on the outer edge. Bosch is out. Four strikeouts for Bell. Inning over, but a big inning for the Tigers. They score three times, and we go to the sixth.
Rookie trivia question again today. Who joined the 3,000 hit 500 stolen base club on this day? Well, it was Paul Molitor with the Minnesota Twins. He joined that club. Very special and talented club. There's a strike called on Meiser is Turris. As we start things off here in the sixth inning, three to one is our score. The Tigers with a two run lead, their first lead in the series. And that stroke to right field on a line. Bosch can't get it. And it's going to roll by him all the way to the wall. This big time trouble here is Turris rounding the bag. He'll go to third, and he is in with a stand up triple. And Brennan probably over aggressive on that play and did not need to be. As Turris, what you want to do is give him the base hit. And if you die for this ball, you know he's going to be standing on third base. Therefore, you play it on one hop, you give him the base hit, and you keep the double play in order. And that was one that Brennan wasn't all that close to. First triple of the year for his tourists, and the Angels now with five hits. Here's Rivera. He was at the plate when Porcello and Corta Wild pitch, which scored a run back in the fourth. Base hit back in the second for Rivera. He's had seven RBIs in his last five games, has a primo RBI opportunity here, and he floats one in the air to center field. Kelly comes out and makes a diving catch. No, it's going to drop in. Rivera is safe. Kelly, who made a fabulous running catch earlier in the game. It looked like he had that ball in his glove. I don't know if the ground caused the ball to fall out of the glove, but he covered a lot of ground. He got there, and it looked like it never got in the glove, but a great effort by Kelly in the outfield. Looked like it hit right off the thumb of the glove. Rivera gets his 43rd RBI, and all of a sudden now, 3 to 2 ball game. Here's Kendrick. Ball one strike and Howie. 0 for 2. Strikeout ground out. Nine game hitting streak for Kendrick who's playing first base today. One and two. Ninety pitches here in the sixth inning for Porcello. And tipped into the glove for strike three. It's the first out of the inning and a strikeout number four now for Rick Porcello. Here are the other members of that 3,000 hit 500 stolen base club. We've got some heavyweight names on that list. Here's Reggie Willits. 3 2 ball game. Each team now with six hits. Willits looks at strike one. Reggie is single and two at bats in this one today. He was bothered by a bad hamstring all spring training long, and he started the season on the disabled list. Swing and a miss, so and two. Yeah. 
Well, it's not an easy guy to double up with his speed, especially coming out of the left side of the batter's box. But Porcello has gotten his share of ground balls today. And he could use one here in the sixth after a leadoff triple by his tourists and a base hit by Rivera to score him. Nine ground ball outs in this game for Porcello. One and two on Willits. And he stays alive. Angels are headed back home after this series. The Tigers, of course, have Tampa coming in. And uh, let's read the stat where the Angels this year will fly more air miles than any team in the major leagues, over 50,000 air miles. Of course, playing out on the West Coast has one of the disadvantages. The White Sox will fly the, fly the fewest miles, 22,000, based in the Midwest. Two balls, two strikes. Seattle usually. It flies the most miles of any of the clubs because of where they sit in the Pacific Northwest. Angels are going back home, then they're flying back out east after the next home stand. There's nothing like those four and a half hour coast to coast flights. 2 2, the count stays on Willits. Action in the Detroit bullpen. As Porcello closes in on 100 pitches, Robbie Weinhardt is warming up. Outside, three and two. Jeff Mathis waiting on deck. This will be the ninth pitch coming up in this at bat. And more than likely, Rivera will be on the move from first base with one out. 3 2 count. And it's a little pop up back a short into left field. Base hit. Rivera going to try and get the third. Here comes the throw, and he's going to be out. Throw down a second. Not in time. Willits will take the extra base, but Rivera right in front of Ryan Rayburn try to get the third. Rivera, not the fleetest of foot. And yeah, first and foremost, a really nice throw here by Rayburn getting in, barehanding the ball, getting his body turned in the direction where he's throwing it, which allowed him to throw out Rivera. And a little hesitation by Rivera as he rounded second base. Therefore, uh, he was thrown out. Exmo with a good look at the tag of Brandon Inge. And so Rayburn. Picks up an assist. Willits gets to second. He's the tying run with two outs. Hey fans, as soon as the game ends, our coverage continues with Tigers Live. You'll hear from the manager, Jim Leland, and the players. Plus, we'll break down the game, show you all the highlights. Tigers Live from the Call Sam Studios immediately after the game here on Fox Sports Detroit. Let's hope that there's some happy comments today from Jim Leland. And the players, for that matter. Here's Jeff Mathis now with two outs. Well, I'm not quite sure what the visit was about, but with two outs and the youngster Borges uh, in the on deck circle, who has struggled in his first tour of duty, why give him a strike? And there's the base hit. This but he did. Tie the game. Kelly's throw is cut off, and that'll tie the game, but Mathis will be tagged out to end the inning. So Mathis gets an RBI single. The 3 to 1 lead has disappeared. It's a 3 3 game.
seconds, Cam. We're going to take you back to the second inning. Runners on first and third. Mathis, the hitter, hits one that looks like it's over the head of Don Kelly. Kelly with an outstanding grab to take an extra base hit away from Mathis and at the time keep the score scoreless. Coors Light Freeze Cam always brought to you by your Frost Brood Coors Light. Well, it's a brand new ball game again. 3 3 is our score as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Tigers have their number four hitter coming up, Miguel Cabrera. Trevor Bell has new life now after giving up an early lead and falling behind 3 to 1. Cabrera is 0 for 2, fly ball and a pop up. Average of 344. And he looks at a strike one and one on Miguel. Rivera and he goes back to the warning track one gone time for a game break we go to the studio here's Ryan field oh boy we'll keep an eye on that there's a base hit up the middle for Johnny Peralta. There's already been five no hitters thrown this year. And there's been so many guys that have taken a no hitter into the eighth inning this year. So clearly the year of the pitcher in 2010. Tampa has had their share of the wrong side of the no hitter. Of course, they no hit the Tigers earlier this year. But the Rays have kind of fallen on hard times. They've lost four in a row and they're being no hit today. Here's Rayburn. They've been no hit twice this year already, haven't they? Yeah. And, uh, and last year. First game last year. That's off the glove of the shortstop in the left. Well, it's good to see the Tigers come back out, uh, put a couple of runners on after giving that lead back last half inning. Well, speaking of those Rays, you can see the Tigers battle Tampa Bay tomorrow through Wednesday. Enjoy the weekday value pack four tickets, four hot dogs, four soft drinks. Four bags of chips for only $55. If you'd like tickets, call 866-66-TIGER or visit tigers.com. Mike Butcher making another trip out to the mound here. Chatting with Trevor Bell. Trevor Bell, by the way, has some acting in his background. He was a child actor. In fact, he appeared in a lot of Hot Wheels commercials, but... Show business is in his family. You remember Bozo the Clown? I do. Bob Bell was the original Bozo the Clown on WGN. Well, that's Trevor Bell's grandfather. Mm. So we thought we'd do a split screen here. Bob and Trevor. Born in Flint, Michigan was Bob Bell. And no, his shoes aren't 32s. They're not Bozo feet. Here's Brandon Inge. Two on and one out. Swing and a miss. Inge reaching out an air and scoring in the fifth inning. Tigers need a big hit here with one out to reclaim the lead. One ball, one strike. The Angels got Trevor Bell as a compensation pick when the Tigers signed Troy Percival a few years back and they used that pick to select Bell in the first round of the 05 draft. Two and one. That's a good pitch by Bell. He has not done a whole lot of that today. Good firm fastball inside to either of the right handers or the left handers. Going right back in there. Two and two. A 
It might have been Bill's best fastball of the day at 94 miles an hour. And he grunted on that pitch, too. You could hear it all the way up here. Inch lays off, run it full now, three and two. Tigers took a 3 1 lead. Angels tied it up with two in the six. And the Tigers trying to go ahead as Avila waits on deck. I don't know if you can gamble here for Jim you know, by running the base runners with 3 2 1 out with the ends in the batter's box. And there is ball four to load the bases. Second walk for Trevor Bell. Now it's Avila. Sosha directing traffic. They have some action to their bullpen. Michael Kahn warming up. He was in the ball game last night or appeared in the ball game last night. So now here's Avila with the bases loaded. Way outside, 1 0. And this is going to bring a visit out to the mound for the catcher, Mathis. Bell has thrown just 84 pitches. He had a six pitch fourth inning. Ball right side. It's going to get through a base hit. One run will score. Two runs are coming in. And Alex Avila with a key two run single. Peralta and Rayburn come in. And the Tigers regain the lead. Off the glove of Meiser is Turris at second base. Looked like his Torres was trying to brace himself to grab this ball and try to get a double play out of it And it didn't quite get down far enough to at least keep it in the infield Therefore a couple of runs are able to score but his Torres has some real good range at that second base position But not able to slow that one down Avila gets RBIs 17 and 18 Mike Sosha takes the baseball It's a wall side windows pitching change Angels go to the bullpen and we'll be back Lee Jones has this place rocking. He's in charge of the music here at Comerica Park. Nice lead. And they are fired up here as the Tigers have regained the lead five to three. And still going here with only one out. New pitcher is on now. 
Khan will take over for Bell. Yeah, Don Kelly's had some good at-bats in this game. He's also made a really nice defensive play, and his club needs him to step up here again and drive this run in with just one out. Runner on third base. Here is Don Kelly with runners at first and third. 5-3. Tigers have the lead. Ball one to Kelly. Don had a single to drive in a run back in the fifth inning. That three-run fifth. Ten RBIs on the year for Kelly. Here's the 1 0 from Khan. Swing and a miss. 1 1. Five and a third for Bell. He walked two, struck out four. He was cruising until getting up three in the fifth and two here in the sixth. And he's still responsible for the two base runners. Swing and a miss again. Snap throw with the runner back. Mathis will keep you on your toes. He's already picked off Avila in this game at second base, and he continues to pick on Avila. Tigers have seven of their nine hits in the last two innings. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Catchers are supposed to take care of one another. Here's the one two. That is popped up. Foul ground. Let's see if it gets back, and it does on top of the dugout roof. Kelly almost hit that ball behind him. Don needs a new bat. Is out of Camden, South Carolina. He is a rookie. He is trying to put out the fire here in the sixth. Here's the one two. Swing and a miss. Kelly goes down, and the runner still at third base. First strikeout for Khan. That's going to bring up the top of the lineup now. Will Grimes, who already has a two out hit to drive in a run. Grimes doubled in the fifth. That gave the Tigers a two to one lead at that point. Way outside, 1 0. So the bats coming alive at least today for the Tigers, who limited or had been limited quite a bit in the first two games of the series. Five runs on nine hits. One-zero pitch is low. Two balls and no strikes. Two and one. Swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes. On Will Rhymes. Kind of originally was at the University of South Carolina. He was a position player there, first baseman and a catcher, but then transferred to the College of Charleston, began pitching there. And not too much minor league time before he's given the call to the big leagues this year. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Outside, three balls, two strikes. On deck, Johnny Damon. Here comes the crowd now.
And the 3 2. It's fouled back out of play. The crowd today is 32,037. So they have been 30,000 plus for every game in this series. And again, the 3 2. And that's hit hard over the glove of the first baseman. Kendrick unable to pull it in. That'll score a run. Avila will get to third. And Rhymes does it again with two outs. Second RBI of the day. Both of them with two away. And Rhymes got a 3 2 pitch, something he was able to get out in front of. And he hit this ball right at. Howie Kendrick, the first baseman who took one step and the ball simply jumped right over his glove. Four RBIs on the day, two or uh, on the season, two today for Rhymes, and that'll bring up Damon who doubled in a run back in the fifth. Tigers have put together a three run sixth inning after a three run fifth inning. Nice day for Johnny. Two more hits. He came in 0 for his previous 12. That slight foul back out of play. One ball, one strike. And that's an even 10 hits now for Detroit. To support Rick Porcello, who has given up three runs in this game. Porcello looking for his first win in. Couple of months if the Tigers are able to hold on to this lead here today. May the 23rd, the last time that Rick Porcello won a major league game, and that was in Los Angeles against the Dodgers. I believe he's done in this game. He's pitched six innings, he's thrown over 100 pitches. They don't stretch him much further than 100 pitches. So the Tigers' bullpen is going to have to get nine outs here today. There's a ground ball to second. As Turris gobbles it up to end the inning. But a big inning it is for the Tigers. They score three. Weinhardt will be coming in. since May 23rd and he pretty much owned it today. He needed to have a really good outing and Exmo we're going to show you the grips that he throws his pitches from. That's the slider. He also has a very nice circle change up. You can see that grip. You can really see it in Exmo and then you also have the fastball grip where the two seamer comes right off the fingertips and he pretty much has kept this Angels team at bay with his effort here today. Very nice start so far for Rick Porcello. He kept the ball at the bottom of the strike zone and for the most part kept the ball in the yard. Six innings, eight hits, only two earned runs, no walks, and four strikeouts. And he will turn the baseball over to the bullpen now. They're going to have to get the final 
nine outs of this game in a 6-3 contest as Robbie Weinhart delivers to Peter Borges. And Porcello said he needed a very positive outing here today, and I would say that uh, his outing was very positive. A step forward for Porcello. Borges 0 for 2, a couple of ground balls. Weinhart taking over here in the seventh. Misses high, 1 and 2. Go for Rick after giving up the seven runs in four and a third against the White Sox. Definitely a step forward here today. Had a couple of really good starts back to back. It's fouled down the right field line. Borges in the series 0 for 11. Dead Chris played briefly in the big leagues and is now a major league scout with the Baltimore Orioles. Here's the one two. Flared foul again. One two is on the ground fair inside the bag third base. Borges off to the races. He's going to second. He's going to round the bag. He's coming to third. Rayburn has trouble getting it back in. And there is a triple. And Borges has his first hit in the series. And a great example of how that kid can really run. Too good a pitch uh, by Weinhardt. With two strikes, the kid is struggling. He's 0 for 11 in the series. And the previous pitch was too good. And he throws this one right down the middle. And this ball is whistled right past Inge. And once it gets down in the corner and Borges could see the baseball, it gets past Rayburn, and he's able to show you just how fast he can run. This young man's got another gear. Angels again trying to come right back. The Tigers scored three in the fifth. Los Angeles answered with two in the sixth inning. That has been ruled a double and an error. Bobby Abreu is one for three. And he hits one on the ground with a shortstop. It'll get a run in. Tigers will make the exchange a run for an out. RBI for Abreu, his 60th of the year. It's a six to four ball game. Here's Eric Ibar. He pops up a punt right to the pitcher. Thank you very much. Two gone. Ibar is a really good bunter. He's got 12 bunt base hits this year, but when you're bunting the baseball, if you're running and bunting at the same time, it's usually a bad bunt. And that's exactly what Ibar was doing. He was running out of the batter's box at the same time that that foul ball made contact with his bat. You got to get the bunt down and then you run if you've got speed like Ibar does. Here's Kayaspo with two away. Trevor Thompson did a nice piece in the pregame show today regarding Kayaspo and talking to the manager, Mike Sosha, how they didn't just get him for this year but they got him for years to come they kind of like his bat and his skill set switch hitter that doesn't strike out and they can play adequately at third base but uh, he is in there for his bat as he grounds out to Will Rhymes for the third out of the inning on our way to the bottom of the seven
just can't make on StubHub, the official fan-to-fan ticket marketplace of the Detroit Tigers. Go to StubHub.com and choose your seats today. Well, if Jose Valverde is credited with a save in this game, text Zoom to 37338 to enter to win a party in a Comeric Park suite. It is brought to you by Mazda. Tigers right now holding on to a two-run lead as we go to the bottom of of the seventh inning, and the Angels are going back to their bullpen. Scott Shields is the new pitcher now for the Angels. Scott Shields comes in pitching in his 36th game for Mike Socia, and his numbers don't look like Scott Shields' kind of numbers. The earned run average is a shade over five and a half. Still striking out quite a few, 34 strikeouts and 37 in the third, but. Uh, there was a time where he was one of the best eighth inning guys in all of baseball, getting the ball to Frankie Rodriguez. Underrated role that Shields had in L.A., but it was a good one for him and his club. Scott Shields selected as the setup man of the decade by Sports Illustrated. He had 150 holds since the start of 2004. Those are the most in the major leagues. There you have it. Well, Tigers fans, something to cheer about today. And, of course, it was rally cap day today for the kids, the giveaway here this afternoon. And so far, they've worked. The Tigers take a 2-1 lead into the bottom of the seventh inning. And a perfect day for baseball here in the Motor City, wrapping up this series before the struggling Tampa Bay Rays come to town, the suddenly struggling Rays. Here comes Brennan Bosch to lead it off in the seventh. Bosch, Cabrera, and then Peralta facing the right-hander, Scott Shields. Khan came on to face three batters. Brennan with a big rip, 0-1 on Bosch. Shields has got a fastball anywhere from 92 to 95. At least he's always had a fastball in that range, but uh, one of his better pitches is that breaking ball. He just threw there to Bosch. He's always had an outstanding curveball. On those 12 to 6 breaking balls, if you're looking at a clock, you have the 12 at the top, 6 being at the bottom, comes right off the table. Basha, this one today, 0 for 3, a couple of strikeouts and a pop up. One strikeout swinging on a fastball, and the other strikeout, his last time up, was on a fastball that was away that he didn't swing at. He took it for strike 3. The 0 2 fouled off the pitch that again was up and around the letters. Shields born in Fort Lauderdale. He lives in the Detroit area in the offseason, Northville. The 0 2. Bosch staying alive, fouling it away. Shields has picked up a handful of saves in his career, but uh, mostly his work setting up the closer. Tendonitis in his knee really derailed him in 2009. Bosch fouls away another. On many nights, uh, the outs that the setup men have to get are sometimes a lot stressful than the outs the closers have to get. Most setup men usually come into games with runners on base in scoring position, and closers simply start the ninth inning, usually when they're looking for a save. It was a three-year stretch where Shields was being run out there just about every night. 70 appearances plus. And the 78 appearances back in 05 and actually won 10 games. One ball, two strikes on Bosch. Leading off the bottom of the seventh. And Brennan takes low on a check swing. 2-2. Two, two. Six runs, ten hits for Detroit. The Angels, four runs, nine hits. Cabrera will follow and then Peralta. Ooh, that one just missed. Wow. Ooh, where was that? Ooh. The look on Shields' face says it all. Well, Fox tracks, if we show that, it'll show you the strike. The swing back fastball looked like Ed Rapuano gave up on it. 
It's the ninth pitch coming up in this at bat. The three two is driven in the air to center field and hit well. Borges going back, still going back to the warning track in front of the wall to track it down. Bosch hit it a ton. But the Death Valley out there in center field where it's 420. Here comes Cabrera. It's one of the things you have to learn to accept if you play here for the Tigers at Comerica Park. You hit it to center field, you're going to have to hit it a ton and a half to get it out. And that one, just not quite enough to left center. Cabrera, a couple of fly balls and a pop up. He's 0 for 3. He came in a 330 career hitter against the Angels. Two and all the count. Seals looking a little better today than the last time we saw him. Fastball's firm at 93 to 95. He's got a real good bite with that curveball. Back up the middle into center. And a seed up the middle by Cabrera. It'll be the first hit of the game for Miguel. The Tigers have 11 hits. We'll bring up Peralta. He singled, scored a run in the three run sixth. All six of the Tigers' runs coming in the last two innings. Bell had shut them out for the first four. If you're Cabrera, yeah, we know you're pretty much not going to steal a base, but Shields bounces a lot of those curveballs. And so if you see one headed down toward the dirt, and make sure you get a good secondary lead and get yourself down to second base. That'll get away. And a second goes Cabrera. Right on cue. Right to the edge of the dugout. Remains in play. So the Tigers now an opportunity to get that run back they gave up in the top of this inning. Wild pitch. Mathis out to have a conversation now with Peralta, a chance to drive in a run. Field on a line and caught. Willits comes over. Peralta hits the ball hard again. This time Reggie runs it down and left. Two outs. He's going to bring up Raver. Tigers had five hits in game one. They had four hits yesterday and they've eclipsed their total of the first two games combined with 11 today. Rayburn has a couple of those. Single, double, two runs scored. Outside and sliding over, Mathis blocks it. the deck on a pitch up and at his chin. No words for the wear though. Now, Ravens last time up he hit a bullet into 
right field and he was diving out over the plate. Just did get out of the way. Tigers have had a few two out run scoring hits. Rhymes has a couple of them today. That's in the air toward right center field. Porges on the run again, still utilizing that speed, and he can track anything down out there. The Tigers threaten do not score. Seven in the books. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit, presented by Bell Tire. The iPod Touch, BlackBerry, Android phones with MLB.com at Bat 2010 featuring play-by-play, -play, video highlights, and live audio broadcast. Visit Tigers.com today for more details. Well, some defensive changes now for Detroit. Austin Jackson will enter the ball game. He'll take over in center field. Don Kelly, who already has made a great catch today, slides over to left, and Ryan Rayburn slides over from left to right. And Ryan Perry is your new pitcher. We'll face Meiser as Turris to lead it off here in the eighth inning. Tigers lead by two, six to four. Is Turris a triple and a single? He has scored a run. His triple let off the sixth. They have really not had a whole lot of success against Meiser in this series. He had three hits in the opener of this series against Verlander. Batting fourth today for Mike Sosha. 7 for 10 for Meiser as tourists in the series. Not your typical number four guy, but he's been swinging the bat like a number four hitter. He came in struggling, too. He was not swinging the bat very well before they got to Comerica Park. Where's number 13, as a lot of the Venezuelan born middle infielders do? Either it's for Davy Concepcion or for Omar Vizcal. They both were tremendous shortstops from Venezuela. Swing and miss, and finally, as Turris is retired, swinging at a ball, probably. Let's go back to the studio game break time, and here's Ryan Field. I cannot believe the Tampa offense could possibly be no hit three times. Well, apparently his stuff today is electric. 16 strikeouts. Here's Rivera. Against a team that has some table setters, some guys that can run, don't strike out that much. Morrow's stuff today must be, well, obviously it's fantastic, but 16 strikeouts, that's a lot to punch out. As a matter of fact, I can't think of anybody that has struck out 16 this year off the top of my mind. Top of my head. It's popped up. 
shallow center field. Who's going to take it? Peralta, apparently. And he does, and they're a two run. Yeah, I would be willing to bet nobody has fans 16 this year. They got him from the Seattle Mariners. He's the guy that uh, a few years ago, Lincecum, was taken behind Brandon Morrow. Of course, Lincecum was from the Seattle area, and a lot of people felt like they should have taken Tim Lincecum, but they didn't. They took Morrow, and now Morrow is pitching for the Toronto Blue Jays. And Lincecum's won a couple Cy Youngs. Howie Kendrick, 0 for 3, a couple of strikeouts and a ground out. Perry trying to get through this eighth. Perry's got a big arm. 96 today, his top fastball. 85 would be a slider. Perry also throwing a few changeups these days. Kendrick is aboard. So now they'll bring the tying run to the plate. Albeit not a home run hitter, it'll be Reggie Willits. Make it 10 hits now for the Angels. Has two of those, a pair of singles. Runner goes. Here comes the throw. Tag. Safe. Kendrick wasting little time, stealing his 11th. He got a pretty good jump. Avila with a nice exchange, a real nice firm throw right on the bag. But it was the jump that Kendrick got that allowed him to beat it. Barely. It seems like Avila puts the ball on the bag every single time. He's been accurate. Doesn't rush. Just kind of takes his time. And still really learning the finer points of that catching position. Belverde and Coke in the bullpen. Those two guys haven't pitched a whole lot since the break. Tigers haven't been in the lead in many games. I was talking to Phil Cope before the game today, and I'm saying, you haven't been out there very much lately. He says, you're right, and I don't like it. I like pitching. It's been a fabulous addition to this Tigers bullpen picked up in the offseason and the flurry of trades the Tigers made. Of course, the big one involving Granderson, a three team deal. And that's a soft liner to second base on one hop. Grimes will throw out Willits, and the threat is over. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Tigers lead by two.
strength and stability since 1849. Wall side windows for a free and home estimate. Call 1-800-521-7800. And by Bell Tire. Get the lowest tire price, period. Here come the Tigers at the bottom of the eighth, leading it today 6-4 to four as Brandon Inge starts it off. It'll be Inge, Avila, and Kelly facing Scott Shields out for his second inning of work. There's a strike call, and the count now is 2-1 and one on in. And the 2 1 pitch. Outside, three balls in one strike. Tigers would like an insurance run or two here in the eighth. They're up by a pair. Shields gave up a single to Cabrera in the seventh. Wild pitch advanced them, but they couldn't score him. Roll to third base on the backhand. Kiasco has it. And another one in the dirt, and that one is scooped on the backhand by Kendrick. One gone. Comerica game summary in this one. Will Rhymes, big day, three for four, double two RBIs. Both of his RBIs came with two outs. Savila had a big two run hit in this game. And also Porcello, good work today. Six innings, two earned runs, and walked none. Here is Savila. Wave and a miss. Alex's two run single in the sixth inning made it five to three. It broke a three three tie. Two and one. It's three balls in one strike on Avila. And Kelly waiting on deck. Tigers got three in the fifth, three in the sixth. And they pounded out 11 hits in this game. Three one pitch. And there's a walk. Ball four. First walk for Shields. There's Don Kelly, RBI single of the fifth inning. Ball outside, 1 0 on Kelly. When the Angels come to the plate in the ninth inning, they'll have Mathis do up, then Borges and Abreu. All of a sudden, Shields struggling to throw a strike, 2 0. Bell started for them, gave way to Khan in the sixth. Shields in the seventh. There's another one that missed, three balls and no strikes. Got the top of the lineup, Rhymes waiting on deck. Way high, ball four, and that puts two aboard for the Tigers. It's going to bring Mike Butcher out again. He's been out several times today. And the 
Base on balls have been an issue this year for Shields. 28 and 37 innings coming in. And while they talk about it, let's go back to the studio. Game break. Ryan Field has that update on the possible no hitter. Ryan. So Longoria breaks it up with two outs in the ninth. And the Rays will not get no hit again. Dave Steve, the only other pitcher in Blue Jay history to throw a no hitter back in 1990. Boy, was this stuff good. Here's Rhymes now with two on and one out. And Shields has now thrown 12 balls and three strikes in this inning. Rhymes a couple of RBIs, single and a double. Way outside again, 2 0. He is digging a hole here. It's getting deeper and deeper. Nobody warming up, although they are starting to stir in that Angels bullpen. Here's the 2 0. Three balls and no strikes on Ryan. <laughs> Kevin Jetson starting to warm up now. And Ryan's taking all the way on 3 0. It's a strike, 3 and 1. Rhymes three hits two RBIs trying to deliver again here in the eighth inning and he takes ball four that will load him up for Detroit three straight walks after retiring the leadoff hitter now he's got to deal with Johnny Damon Day today for Damon, two hits and an RBI. If you're Damon, you don't necessarily have to take the pitch. If you get a fastball right down the middle, and then go ahead and let it all hang out. Drive in one, drive in two. Johnny takes strike one. It's a nice call there by Mathis, the catcher, to go to the breaking ball because Shields clearly has had a difficult time of throwing his fastball over the plate for a strike in the eighth inning. So he calls for the secondary pitch and he gets the strike call. Way inside. One ball, one strike. That's the 40th pitch thrown by Shields. And this is only his second inning of work. The 1 1. Line drive, base hit right field. Avila scores. Kelly coming around. They'll send him home. He will score. Rhymes takes third, and Johnny Damon comes through in the eighth. The twelfth hit of the game for the Tigers, and they extend the lead now to eight four. A ninety one mile power fastball, and Johnny Damon gets on top of it and whistles it. And right over the head of his tour is the second baseman in. And then it's on from there. A couple of runs score and Rhymes hustles to get over to third base with still just one out. A three hit day for Johnny Damon. Some insurance cashing in. They go back to the bullpen. We'll be back.
to four. 12 Tigers hits on the afternoon. Damon has three RBIs. Scott Shields kind of dug a hole for himself. He walked Avila, and he also walked Kelly. And put a couple of runners in the scoring position, and Johnny Damon made him pay for it. Here's Jackson getting his first at bat. Coming on as a defensive replacement. And Austin takes strike one. Jepson's got a really good arm. Fastball anywhere from 95 to 97 with a real nice slider as well. And yes, that was a slider at 90 miles an hour. It's what you call a, a big arm in baseball these days. Cut and a miss, 0 and 2 on Jackson. So Kevin Jepson follows Scott Shields, who followed Khan, who followed the starter Bell. Tigers offense coming alive today with eight runs, maybe more. Mathis able to stop that one. Well, he's not afraid to throw that thing around. Most runs scored by the Tigers since defeating Baltimore 12 9 on July the 5th. That gives you an idea of how cold this offense had gotten. July the 5th. It's a long time. One and two. Back out of play. Well, second half of the season, they've pretty much been averaging about three runs a game. Not a whole lot more than that. Mathis again. Runner will try and advance. That's Damon, and he will. Mathis upset with himself. Damon moves up. Wild pitch. That's one thing these catchers do very well in Anaheim. They block pitches and call good games. They've got a real good teacher in their manager, Mike Socher, who was a real good defensive catcher himself. Orlando Mercado, also their bullpen coach, a former catcher, helps out with a lot of the catching duties for Mike Sosa. Infield in, and there's a base hit to left. That'll get another run in. Grimes will score, and Jackson gets it done. So all three walks that Shields allowed in this game have come around to score. It's 9-4. to four. Well, it's worth repeating. Yeah, the year that Jackson has had this year, just very, very consistent with the bat. And he ranks in the top of several, if not all, of the you know, rookie categories as far as offensive production is concerned. He's had an outstanding season. Cabrera lines one caught by the second baseman is Turris. And the thing that's so impressive about Jackson is he gets it done on both sides of the ball. Well, and it's not like he's had the, the ability just to kind of blend in because he's playing premium position center field. He's leading off for the offense, so they are counting on him to set the table. It's not like he's a guy that you kind of slide in in the seventh or eighth spot or the ninth spot. He has a chance to be an impact player. And he has shown flashes of brilliance in his rookie campaign. An impact player. Here's Peralta. Really the only tool that Jackson hasn't put on display and he does have a little bit of it and that's power only one home run this year so far for Austin those numbers will go up though Mathis again smothering one and box me up a crate of those Ball one strike on Peralta. Johnny with a one for four today, single and a run score. Oh. 
13 Tigers hits with that single by Jackson. Well, if Jackson, you can steal a base here if you want to. And Jackson does have the green light. Jim has said as much, unless Jim stops him. Jefferson kind of deliberate as far as his delivery toward home plate. In the dirt, and Jackson will move up. Another wild pitch. Two in the inning. Three in the last two innings. They've had quite a few all day. Now a base hit. Could get you two more. And again he goes down to block one. Math is putting in a full day's work today behind the plate. Three and two. Rayburn waiting on deck. Pulled toward third base. Kiaspo has it there. And the inning is over. But it's a big inning for the Tigers. They score three more. They lead nine to four. Inning last call time here for the Los Angeles Angels. Here's the update on the uh, McDonald's player of the game voting. Will Rhymes deservedly so 40%, although there are quite a few Tigers that should be on the list today. Cabrera 11% and Alex Avila 10%. You can still vote. Final results coming up post game during Tigers Live. In the meantime, here comes Jose Valverde. Papa Grande's kind of stubbed his toe uh, the last couple of times he's gone out there. He had a 60 pitch performance in Boston then he took a few days off and then the next time he told the rubber it was here at Comerica Park and he also had a rough uh, go of it that day so in Boston he had a tough time commanding his fastball and here at Comerica Park his last outing his splitter you know, wasn't working all that efficiently for him which is something we haven't said all that often as far as Valverde is concerned that split fingered fastball has been a tremendous pitch this year. Well, he has a five run lead to work with here as we go to the ninth inning. Mathis leading it off, and then Borges and Abreu. Mathis one for three, singled, and drove in a run in the sixth inning. Zero and two.
Angels have had 10 hits of their own and have scored four runs. Swing and a miss, and Valverde racks up a strikeout, one away. Three pitches to dispose of Mathis. Here comes Peter Borges. Borges doubled. Scored a run back in the seventh. Pitch high to Borges. One for 12 in the series for the rookie center fielder. Two and oh. Porcello started this one. Weinhardt came on to the seventh. Perry handled the eighth, and now Valverde here in the ninth. Shields a rough outing for the Halos. He went one and one third, two hits, three walks, three earned runs. Now the 2 0 coming. 3 0 on Borges. And he walked him on four straight pitches. The number nine hitter gets a free pass. Jim Leland. Not like those ninth inning walks, even with a five run lead. Here's Abreu. It was the walks that got Shields into trouble. He walked Avila and Kelly, the eight and nine hitters. And then he walked Rhymes and Damon singled in a pair. Abreu's ground ball knocked in a run back in the seventh. Runner goes. And to the backstop it goes. So Borges standing at second base. One and oh on Abreu. And now Avila trots out to the mound. Total of 23 hits between these two teams today. The Tigers have 13 of them. Lifted in the air. Right field. Rayburn coming under it. Abreu is out and there are two gone. So if Alberti needs one more out here and the Tigers can get a victory and earn at least a win in this three game series. Well it wasn't quite the laugher uh, that we were asking for at the beginning of the show but. A win is a win and it is desperately needed and Valverde needs that one big out to get it.
Tigers one out away from snapping a four game losing streak. And the man standing in their way is Eric Ibar as the crowd comes to his feet. What was so surprising about the Tigers slide is that they came in for the second half with the best record in the American League on their home turf. But they have stubbed their toe since the second half of the season. Ibar hit by a pitch in the fifth, the only time he's reached. He's their last chance. Ball one. Here is Valverde's 1 0 pitch. And it's low, two balls and no strikes. Arbad trying to keep it going for their number three hitter, Kayaspo. The Tigers have had three separate innings of three runs today a three run fifth, sixth, and eighth. Pitch on the outer edge at 96. Two and one on Ibar. Ground ball foul, make it two and two. One strike away now from Valverde. Putting this one in the victory column. The Tigers so desperately need it would be their 54th victory of the season. And the 2 2. Bouncing ball to second should do it. Will Rhymes has it, and the Tigers win it today. In the ninth inning, no runs, a walk. They strand a man. The Tigers win the final game of the series and snap a four game losing streak. Nine four, your final score. Back with more in a moment.